giving you guys an unscripted, very simple video today, but a very helpful one. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I had something awful happen, not once, not twice, but three times uh, recently when I was using my CNC, and I wanna show you the two ways you can best prevent an issue like this from happening to you. The first thing has to do with dust buildup in the collet. So if you're using your CNC a lot, you just saw a lot of sawdust come out of there when I'm doing a bit change. That does not go well for you if you don't clean out the collet well enough. And I will be honest and I will admit that I've done the wrench tap one too many times and that's all I've done assuming that's enough. It's not enough. Get yourself a can of compressed air or if you have an air compressor that's always hooked up so it's convenient, give it just a couple little bursts of air in there and you're gonna thank yourself later because you really need to get any remaining sawdust out there. That can cause the bit to slip. You obviously don't want your CNC bit to slip while running it at how you know 18,000 RPM. So take it from me, go the extra step, use some compressed air to clean out your collet well every single bit change, or if you're not doing any bit changes, but you're using the CNC for hours on end, go ahead and stop the job at some point and just clean out your collet and put your bit back in. So here was the problem that I experienced. I was using a V-bit to carve the details of this nutcracker and yikes, yeah, that happened. Um, everyone suggested it was bit slippage. So I cleaned out my collet really well and honestly, the bit didn't even look like it was in a different position when I did this. Ran the job again. Guess what? It did this. It just wasn't doing what I told it to do. So I realized I probably have a problem with EMI. If you're not familiar with EMI, that's electromagnetic interference. And two main ways that you might have issues with this is having too many things plugged into the same circuit and or improper grounding. So I'm gonna show you what my experience was. Every time I would go to adjust this or touch this during a job, I would get a little static electrical shock, just a little, you know, a little zap. And that told me that I had something not quite right, to say the least. So this is my control box. It's underneath my table and it is plugged into this little extension cord, just the monitor and the control box, that's it. The extension cord runs up behind the table and then it plugs into its own circuit by itself. I did used to have my router also plugged into that outlet. Mistake number one. I had wired up some fresh outlets in my ceiling recently and so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna switch the router up to that so it has its own circuit and really test this whole EMI theory and see if we get any uh, improvement. And then this is my dust collection system. It's the G700 and it does run on its own 220 circuit. So that's not an issue in terms of pulling power. It's on its whole own thing. But I will say I noticed that my grounding wire was actually connected to my hose that's going to the table saw originally. So I made sure to switch that over and give it a really good connection to the two and a half leading to the CNC. And with all these changes that I made, putting the router on its own circuit, having the control box on its own circuit, uh, dust collection on its own circuit with a really good grounding wire setup, I was not having any other interferences. Um, definitely keep checking your collets for sawdust buildup, but otherwise look for ways you can decrease EMI and just have a good CNC experience. So have fun, keep making stuff. See ya.